Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch where we bring you news developments from around the world. Our headlines, anti-racist organizers in Denver in the United States released after a week in jail. Hamas and Fatah announce agreement, Palestinian elections to be held within months. Groups from across the world ask the United Nations to take action against Israeli apartheid. Argentina rejects Bolivian de facto president statements at the UN Assembly. And farmers across India take to the streets protesting new laws. In our first story on Thursday, three organizers from the Party of Socialism and Liberation who were arrested on trumped-up charges in connection with anti-racist protests in the U.S. state of Colorado were released. The activists Lillian House, Eliza Lucero and Joel Northam were arrested last Thursday in Denver and spent a week in jail in unsafe and inhumane conditions and were denied their right to due process. One of their fellow organizers, Russell Rush, was released earlier. This Thursday, the judiciary in Colorado set the bonds for the three activists, which once paid means that they can no longer be held in preventive detention. However, the district attorney has not dropped the charges against the activists, which range from felony charges such as kidnapping and rioting to misdemeanors such as disturbing the peace. The PSL organizers had raised concerns regarding the substandard conditions endured by prison inmates. According to Lillian and Eliza, who were held in the women's unit of the jail, Supposed COVID-19 safety measures led to all inmates being held in isolation for 23 hours and 20 minutes. The three activists reported that they used the same mask and prison jumpsuit without getting time to shower the whole week. PSL and other organizations in the US have been raising awareness on the inhumane and unsafe conditions within prisons, especially in the light of the pandemic. The arrested organizers were in the forefront of demanding justice for Elijah McLean. 23-year-old Eliza McLean was murdered by officers from the Aurora Police Department on August 24, 2019. No police officers have been arrested for the murder till date. In fact, the district attorney Dave Young announced on June 25th this year that there was not enough evidence to rule McLean's death a homicide and punish those involved in that crime. Over the week that they were held in jail, the activists and organizers received an outpouring of support from people's movements, organizations and leftist political parties across the globe who denounced the political nature of the charges. In our next story on Thursday, the two main Palestinian groups, Hamas and Fateh, announced that they had reached a deal to hold the first elections in Palestine in nearly 15 years. The General Secretary of the Fateh Movement, Jibril Rajab, announced the deal in Ramallah and said that the elections will be held within the next six months. The delegation included Jibril Rajab from Fateh and Saleh Aruri from Hamas. The factions met in Turkey's capital Ankara on Monday to finalize the agreement, which was first reached between President Mahmoud Abbas of Fateh and the top leader of Hamas, Ismail Haniya, earlier this month. Agreeing that divisions among Palestinian factions have led to the weakening of the movement, Rajab announced that building national unity is a strategic goal of the agreement and our path is a path to elections. The democratic process is the only way to build our political system. That was the direct quote. The vote will take place in all occupied territories including Eastern Jerusalem. The agreement which was reached on Wednesday will be submitted for approval to the next meeting of the heads of Palestinian factions to be held on October 1st. Disagreements between the two main factions emerged after the surprise victory of Hamas in the Palestinian elections of 2006. Since 2007, Hamas has been ruling Gaza independently while the Palestinian Authority was under Fatah's control. Several earlier attempts at reconciliation have failed and the recent Israeli announcement of formal annexation of parts of the occupied West Bank and the uae bahrain israel deal are believed to have led the factions to reach the agreement. In our next story, on Tuesday, Palestinian civil society groups along with scores of other groups from across the globe, launched a global campaign demanding that the United Nations General Assembly, to quote, assume its responsibility for investigating and ending Israeli apartheid as it did in South Africa. The campaign coincides with the 75th anniversary commemoration of the first sitting of the UNGA going on at the moment in New York. The campaign began with the release of a letter signed by 452 civil society organizations from across the globe. The letter says that apartheid is a crime against humanity and acknowledges the crucial role played by the UN to fight it in the past. The letter notes several previous acknowledgements by UN teams about the nature of Israeli policies inside the occupied territories. It quotes the found findings of the UN Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination in December 2019, according to which Israel has a policy, of, policy and practice of segregation and apartheid against Palestinians on both sides of the Green Line. The letter also quotes the South African National Statement in the UN Human Rights Council in June this year, which highlights that the proposed annexation of territories in the West Bank would be another example of the complete impunity that makes a mockery of this council and would gravely breach international laws. The signatories reiterated the long-held demands of the Palestinian people for the right to self-determination and end of Israeli occupation. 
They also demanded that the members of the UN General Assembly launch an investigation into the Israeli apartheid regime and hold individuals and states responsible in aiding Israel. The letter demands a reconstitution of the UN Special Committee Against Apartheid and the UN Center Against Apartheid, which were disbanded at the end of the apartheid regime in South Africa. It also calls for a ban on arms trades and all kinds of security cooperation with Israel by member states of the UNGA and prohibition of all trade in Israel with Israeli settlements inside the occupied territories. Continuing with the United Nations General Assembly, on Wednesday during her speech before the 75th session, the de facto president of Bolivia, Johnny Nanez, attacked the progressive government of Argentine President Alberto Fernandez over claims of, to quote, a systematic and abusive harassment against Bolivia. She also accused the Argentine government of interfering in Bolivia's internal affairs and supporting a violent conspiracy. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Argentina on behalf of the national government rejected these statements made by Arnaiz against the country in her speech. In a series of tweets, the foreign ministry stated that Arnaiz was trying to involve the Argentine government during the electoral campaign in the internal politics of Bolivia and they hoped that Ms. Arnaiz can focus her energy on holding free and transparent presidential elections on October 18th. The interim president criticized the government of Argentina for giving political asylum and refuge to Evo Morales. Evo Morales was overthrown in a coup in 2019. Anes's government came into power following the violent civic military coup against Morales's democratic government of the movement, of movement towards socialism. Despite her claim, however, the military and police violence and human rights violations committed in Bolivia after the coup under Anes's rule have been the subject of reports prepared by various international organizations. The US has questioned the UN has questioned the judi judicial inaction and impunity in the case of massacres committed in Sacaba and Sencata, in which several people were killed by state security forces. Additionally, several national human rights and social organizations have denounced Onez's regime numerous times for committing grave human rights violations, militarizing the territories, overseeing brutal police repression against civilians. She has also been accused by indigenous and left organizations of racist, patriarchal, and selective persecution of political and social leaders and their families and showing disregard for democracy and media censorship. And finally, on Friday, farmers across India took to the streets against the controversial farm bills passed in Parliament. Farmers and workers' unions stated the policies seek to serve corporate interests. The protests brought economic activities to a standstill in the states of Punjab and Haryana. Protests were also held in other states such as Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra, Bihar and Andhra Pradesh, among others. At the call of the All India Kisan Sangash Coordination Committee, an umbrella organization of 250 groups, as well as labor organizations and federations, hundreds and thousands came together for the protest. Farmers demanded that the three farm bills, which they fear will usher in a corporatization of agriculture, be scrapped, and that a minimum legislation for support, minimum support price be enacted. Earlier this week, a much resisted vo vo voice vote amid an uproar in the upper house of parliament ensured the passage of two contentious bills. The third one was passed two days later with the opposition leader staging a walkout, describing the bills as a death warrant to farmers. On Friday, roads including national highways were blocked with tractor rallies across districts in Punjab and Haryana, the richest agricultural states, which are in the forefront of the farmers' turf. In the national capital, Delhi, a demonstration was organized at the Jantar Mantar by the leaders of the central trade unions who pitched for workers and farmers to join hands against the policies of the centre. Here is a feature on the protest that took place today. मोदी सरकार जो तीन किसान विरोधी बिल ले आए ये जो तीन कानून अदानी और अंबानी जैसे बड़े कॉर्पोरेट कंपनियों को लूट के लिए खुला छूट देने वाले कानून हैं किसान मांग रहे थे उनके फसल के लिए स्वामीनाथन कमीशन के सिफारिश के तहत उत्पादन खर्च से डेढ़ गुना दाम उस पर 
बिल्कुल चुप्पी इस सरकार का रहा है और ये जो कानून लिया है इसमें मंडी खत्म करने का और ग्रेजुअली सरकारी खरीद समर्थन मूल्य पर उसको खत्म करने का जमाखोरी और काला बाजारी को बढ़ावा देना और कॉर्पोरेट कॉन्ट्रैक्ट खेती के ओर हमारा देश को ले जाने वाले हैं जमाखोरी और काला बाजारी बंद को खुला छूट देने वाला जो कानून है उसमें उसके तहत आम जनता को भी बड़े पैमाने में महंगाई भी आने वाले दिनों में होने वाला है तो इसीलिए एक व्यापक एकता बनाते हुए पूरा देश भर में किसान सड़कों पर है टुडे आर कंट्री इज फेसिंग अ वेरी वेरी सीरियस सिचुएशन अ बिग चैलेंज दिस इज इन दी फॉर्म ऑफ दीज थ्री बिल्स दैट द बीजेपी सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट हैज नाउ रैम्ड थ्रू पार्लियामेंट यस्टरडे इन अ टोटली अनडेमोक्रेटिक मैनर these bills are connected not only with agriculture although they are but they are also connected with all other sections of the people in our country and these three bills uh, were passed with a very very authoritarian way in the rajya sabha yesterday this was in a way a mur murder of parliamentary democracy in our country these three bills what are they one is the essential commodities act amendment bill which removes all the things like pulses cereals oil seeds onion potato from the stock thing there is no limit to holding and therefore there will be no limit to black marketing so therefore it is actually an attempt to totally destroy the essential commodities act which is one guarantee for food security and proper price which all the people can afford this will also not help the farmers in any way that is one bill the second bill is which is destroying the apmc agricultural produce market committees and which is now encouraging corporate trade in agriculture and in short it is going to hand over the entire trade in agriculture to the big corporate lobby headed by the ambanis and the adanis and others the third one is regarding contract farming where also the farmers are going to be left to the mercy of the corporate lobby and multinational corporations these are all the three bills which were originally brought as ordinances by the modi government on the 5th of june taking advantage of the covid lockdown and now they have been rammed through parliament in these last two or three days we are appealing to everybody to farmers of india to the workers of india to the agricultural workers of india to the middle class of india and to every single patriotic person rise against the modi government because this modi government is now out to throw farmers agricultural workers workers even middle class employees to the winds that's all we have time for today we will be back on monday with more news from around the world until then keep watching people's dispatch yeah, 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 yeah.